Every woodworker needs a mallet. In fact, I've made over a hundred of them, and in this video, I'm going to share with you my process and my favorite woodpecker's tools that I like to use along the way. First, we're going to work on the mallet head. I'm going to be using canary wood for the two outside faces and walnut for the center. I already milled the wood to three inches wide and three quarter inches thick. To cut the head down to size, I'm going to be using one of my personal favorites, the auto scale miter sled. First, I'm going to set the stop at five and a quarter inches. And then adjust the angle to three degrees. Next, I cut a fresh end on the canary wood, then flipped it over and slid it against the stop to cut the first side to final length. Then I rotated the piece back towards me and cut a second piece. These will be the two outside faces of the mallet. And then I just repeated that on the walnut, which will end up being the center of the mallet. But since I need to create a mortise for the handle, I have to cut the walnut piece in half. So I set my fence back to zero degrees and then adjusted the stop to two and five eighths. And since this is a rather small and dangerous cut, I use the hold down clamp to help make it a little safer. I then marked an X on the nicer looking faces that I want to be the outside of the mallet, and then flipped one of the outside faces over to do some layout work using the center scale on my six inch rule. Once I found center, I made a mark at 7 16 on either side, and then I used my 4 inch bevel gauge to copy the 3 degree angle and transfer it to my marks I just made. Make sure to mark it so that the lines are parallel to each edge. Next I grabbed my two walnut pieces and flipped them over towards me, and then flipped them again so the 3 degree angles are facing each other. Now I just have to line them up with my layout lines and glue the walnut to the canary. To glue this up though, I used a combination of Type Bond 3 and Star Bond CA glue. The Type Bond is more for strength, and the CA glue just provides an instant bond so that the pieces aren't sliding out of alignment when I go to put this in clamps. After letting it sit in clamps for a while, I removed the head and marked some layout lines using my delve square. I made a mark at one inch in from the edge and an inch and a half up from the bottom. Where these two lines intersect is where I drilled a hole using a one inch Forstner bit. I made sure to set the depth so I only drilled through the walnut. And I'm just drilling these holes so I can put some BBs in there to add some weight to the mallet. If you don't want a heavier mallet, then feel free to skip this step. Next, we're just about ready to glue on that second outside face. But first, before I do that, I like to mark some reference lines using my delve square. This makes it easier so I can align the two faces during the glue up. Now I'm using BBs to add weight to my mallet, but you can use any scrap metal like washers or whatever you have laying around your shop just make sure whatever it is doesn't stick above your hole. And I also like to add glue to the BBs so the mallet doesn't sound like a baby rattle. Some people prefer them to stay loose to create this dead blow effect, but I'd rather not hear them bouncing around inside. But here you can see how those layout lines we made really helped in making sure those two faces are aligned with each other during the glue up. And after it's dry, I take the mallet and head over to my belt sander to clean up the top and bottom faces of the mallet. Next, we gotta cut the head down to final size. So I set the fence back to three degrees and then lined up my mallet head to take roughly a 30 second off each side. After cutting, I like to use my six inch hook rule to check that I took an even amount off each side and that my mortise is pretty well centered. 
The last step for making the mallet head is to just add a chamfer using my ultra sheer carbide insert chamfering bit over at my router table. And as you can see, this whole process requires many different steps along the way. Each step goes rather quickly, but it requires some setup time. So I opted to make three mallets at once, and I definitely recommend that you do the same when you make one. Now we can turn our attention to the handle. I decided to make mine out of walnut. I like my handle blanks to be anywhere from 11 and 12 inches and 1 and a 16th of an inch square. First, I'm using my 4 inch saddle T square to mark a layout line 3 and a quarter inches down from the top. This is where the shoulder of our tenon will be. And here you can see how the tenon will end up sticking out a quarter inch past the head. Now, this is intentional, so don't worry, we'll trim it to final size at the end. To cut the tenon, I'm using a 3 quarter inch dado stack on my table saw. And it wasn't until recently that I started using a full 3 quarter inch dado stack on there because my arbor isn't long enough to use the washer and the nut. And that kind of just sketched me out, so I always just use a smaller dado stack. But now I have this dado nut, which combines the washer and the nut into a single unit, and it can fully engage on the threads. This gives my dado stack proper support and just makes it a lot safer. After that was all installed, I used a setup block to help set the height of my blade and grab my exact 90 to cut the tenon to size. I lined up my shoulder reference mark with my dado stack and then set the stop. But we're not gonna just assume this blade height is good and go straight for the shoulder. I like to first just make a test cut near the end of the handle and check to see that it fits before committing to the blade height. Now I got super lucky and nailed this one on the first try. So I lowered my stop and took away material on the two faces. Next, I adjusted the height for the other side of my tenon and made some test cuts. This one took a few more tries to dial in, but once I got a good fit, I was ready to commit to that and cut the tenon to final size. And you'll know you nailed it when your head slides on nice and snug, just like this. Next, I gotta do some layout work on the tenon where I'm gonna make some relief cuts. For that, I'm using the quarter inch side of my delf square to make a mark on either side of the tenon and then make a mark a half inch up from the shoulder. Where those two lines intersect is where I can drill a hole all the way through using an eighth inch drill bit. Then I can head over to the bandsaw and set my fence to line up with my marks to make my relief cut. Lastly, I like to add a chamfer to the handle just to make it more comfortable to hold. But to make it look a little more decorative, I like to leave an inch at the top and bottom of the mallet completely unrouted. It just looks cooler to me. And to do that, I just made some reference marks and then set the stops on my router table to limit the travel in either direction. Then with everything all set up, I just routed all four sides of the handle. I also like to use a scrap piece of plywood to support the cut while I add a chamfer to the end of the handle as well. And with that, the handle was all done. The last thing I need is some shims to attach the handle to the head. And for that, I have this simple little jig I made. I just grabbed some scrap pieces of the cutoffs from my mallet head and placed them in this notch and push them through the blade. It's definitely the fastest way I've found to cut shims. And funny thing is, you actually need a mallet to make a mallet. So I'm going to be using this blue spruce mallet to help me assemble this thing along with four shims and some wood glue. First, I like to add glue to the mallet head instead of the mallet handle. This way, when I push the head down, glue doesn't get forced down and get all over the handle and make a mess. Next, I mallet in two shims in the center and then check for square before sending in the last two shims which will secure the head in its final place.
Immediately following that, I just grabbed my flush cut saw and cut off the excess. Then back over to the belt sander to clean everything up before doing some light final sanding with my orbital sander and some hand sanding. Now this is the best part, adding finish. I like to use a simple homemade mix of beeswax and mineral oil and just apply it with a rag. And if you follow all of these steps, you'll have a beautiful mallet that you can use in your shop and it should last a lifetime. Or if it breaks, just make another one since now you know how. If you enjoyed this content, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Better yet, leave a comment below and share your thoughts or any questions you have. If you'd like to add any of the woodpecker's tools to your shop that I use in this video, then there's a bunch of links right below that'll take you directly to the ordering page. Thanks so much guys for watching and I'll see you next time.